Hey, Brass Facts here. I'm uh, completely worn out after two days of shot, barely hanging on by a thread, but I wanted to get a video out, so pardon the impromptu nature of this, or the fact that I'm using what is essentially a lapel mic held up to my face. My voice is dying, my feet no longer work, and I'm running out of booze. Let's do this. Everyone is excited about 42 different lever guns that are coming out of a SHOT Show, because apparently that's the thing this year, but my obsession, and I think because you watch me, your obsession is a little more autistic. So, laser aiming modules. The cheap ones suck, the good ones cost more than your night vision, and the only mid-tier recommendation is something like a gray market full power peck that if it breaks, you can never fix it ever again. Power-wise, all of these units I'm about to discuss are on par with the $3,000, $4,000, five, Engels are like, what, $5,000? devices on the market right now. They'll, they'll be able to keep up, you know, you know, assuming th these products do what they say they're gonna do, or in some cases do what we think they're going to do because not even the manufacturer truly knows yet, right? A lot of this stuff is up in the air. Yeah, it's a shot show, right? Like, what do you think? Come on, give me a break. So let's, let's, let's crack straight into it. Uh, so the Oogle, you know, the, the, the L3, or, well, uh, EOTech is not gonna be happy that I messed that one up. The EOTech Oogle, I'm calling it Oogle because that's all you'll ever be able to do with it. Oogle it on the website because uh, it really feels like vaporware at this point. I'll say what I said last year. Call me when it's uh, on the horizon to be released. The actual point of this video, this is where things get interesting. The Hollow Sun Iris. Let me give you the rundown real quick if you haven't seen 42 different shot videos about this thing. Super small. Uh, it's a little longer but less tall than, you know, say a D-Ball, Engal, whatever. Uh, on the left, you have a up and down dial. It's just center is uh, off, up is high power, and low is low power. That's it, right? So three modes, off, high, low. On the top, you have your press to fire, and then on the rear, you have another button, which I thought at first was also a fire button, but that's actually the power selector. Honestly, it, it sucks. Uh, it's not very good. Basically, hold for about two seconds, and it swaps between either the viz or IR mode. And the only thing, the only thing that really indicates which mode you are on is the LED emitter uh, on the back, the really small one that basically all lamps has blue for IR and green for the viz laser. Unfortunately, when you're under night vision, uh, you can't, it looks the same, right? That's, that's not how color works under night vision. So I suspect a lot of people are going to activate the wrong mode many times. It's not the end of the world, uh, but it's a, it's a very short-sighted design in my opinion. Anyways, who cares? On the top, you have a focus patterner, right? So it's basically just a slider forward, brings it in, pulling back, uh, loosens it out. So you get your flood and then all the way to what seems to be a very tight beam more important thing that I was trying to figure out, and honestly, everyone is trying to figure out with this thing is, what is the power level behind that illuminator? That's why we're so excited about this thing, because it's a V-cell illuminator. It's the laws that limit it to about 0.7 milliwatts to prevent eyeball damage do not apply because uh, really stupid reasons, honestly. But it doesn't matter. V-cell allows us to get around it and allows us to get 20, 30, 40, 50 milliwatts on our illuminator, which is really what we want. No one at the booth has any idea what this thing is powered at. The best I got was look at the brochure and the brochure is even more worrisome because it just says in a single line at the back, laser and or emitter 0.7 milliwatts. That is awful if that's the illuminator. Even worse, Nick Chen compared this at a one of the range days and it looked like a complete sieve power laser. I mean, they're all sieve power lasers, but you know what I mean. Maybe this is cope, but I think the initial answer is uh, it just had a weak sauce battery in it, right? It's SHOT Show, everyone is pressing this thing. No one knows how to turn this shit off. Uh, so maybe it drained its entire battery. A little impromptu test that I ended up doing was I came back at this a little later with a PBS 14 and a fresh battery. We, we juiced it up and then pointed it at the wall and you can actually see the illuminator, right? It looks weak and anemic, but remember this is a daylight bright booth. So the tube is auto gated to all hell. So the fact that we can see it means this is certainly more powerful than 0.7 milliwatts that the, the brochure tends to indicate. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't know. It, it, this thing it looks insanely promising at 800 bucks. Shit, even if this was sub 1500 bucks, I'd, I'd be stoked about this thing if it delivers and if it you know fulfills on all the promises. That's where contestant two enters, the ACAL from Zbolt. This thing was almost a tragedy. Well, it, it was a tragedy. They teased in sometime in 2022, and then out of nowhere, it just died. Multiple comments from what I believe was the CEO stated that, yeah, it's, you know, DOA or it didn't even arrive. It's just dead. 
But turns out uh, the skies are parting and we are in the year 2024, the year of our Lord and Savior laser aiming modules, and it's back on track, baby. Uh, looking at the pictures online, I was a bit, you know, you know, it'll be good, but it, it just looks like a D2, right? It's got that big bulbous emitter on the sides, but I'm telling you, seeing this thing in person, this thing is a lot smaller than the images lead on. It's about the size of a PEC-15, but it holds that size very well with the laser itself being directly over the bore. So there's nothing off on one side and the big, you know, emitter thing is pushed to the side, but also down a lot. So it ends up being a very useful shape or design if you want to mount a white light on one of the sides, you know, whatever. And it, it just ends up being a much smaller unit than I was initially led to believe. It's also a good bit lighter than the D2 at nine ounces. It's something like 30 milliwatts on a four degree cone all the way out to a decent flood. We get the aftermarket in here, get a villain systems diffuser, and we can probably leave it on the four degree mode and then snap over the diffuser to get full flood. And we got a we got a pretty cool combo here. And at 1500 bucks, uh, this thing looks like to be kind of the step up from the Hall Sun, right? And Hall Sun has their reputation for a reason. And it's a little more flimsy. This thing looks solid, right? It's a, it's a piece of metal. It, it looks good. It's a little more complicated to manufacture. Look, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, this is just a refined D2. And the D2 is actually a pretty decent laser aiming module. It just happens to be kind of large and chunky. So getting that even a little bit smaller with a nicer emitter, hey, that's a win in my book. Getting into a little bit of brass facts or reading between the lines with the whole Sun Iris and the Z-Bolt ACAL, these things are somewhere in a weird in-between. These are not prototypes by any means, but they're also not final production models. So a lot of what we see here today may change in the future, but it also means these things aren't ready to rock and roll time now. There's going to be a little bit of a spool-up period where things can change for the better or for worse when the, the harsh reality of you know putting one of these things on a manufacturing line happens, right? So you know, fingers crossed, right? It's looking good, bros, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay, the final laser. Uh, this one's from AGM and honestly was a bit of a dark horse. Ah, shit. I mean, I knew as soon as I saw this, I knew, I knew what this was. It's a laser speed FL5 version two with the cap turrets, right? The same thing I reviewed a couple months ago. It's not a terrible laser. I, I don't know how much AGM is doing them or they're just drop shipping these things, to be honest. Uh, I, I'm not seeing any external differences, but maybe, maybe there are, right? It's all subtle and I haven't messed with the version two yet. An interesting aspect, I'm actually, I should have probably asked them about this though. I, I'm sure they can't really answer. The whole reason we like the, the Chinese lasers or the Chinese laser speed lasers is because they're all, you know, bootleg full power lasers. It's not actually legal to sell something like that in the United States, but it's a you know Chinese company. It doesn't give a shit. It's eBaying that bitch in. The rest is history, and so are your eyes. But AGM, they're a real company. I don't think they can actually sell this at full power lasers in the U.S. without the FDA bending them over. Yeah, I don't really know what's going to go on here. Uh, but even if they do make it at full power, yeah, it's going to be a little nicer because now you have a real company that you could probably warranty these things with standing behind the product. But all in all, I, mm, sorry, AGM, I'm really excited to try out some of your thermals. They look really cool. And some of the stuff you teased was, was super neat. Really looking forward to that. But it's also my job to bully the shit out of companies when they do something incredibly stupid. Essentially drop ship a Chinese laser, which is what's seemingly going on here. I'm about to die, but I still need to edit this video now here at the SHOT Show floor. Well, not the SHOT Show floor. I'm, I'm by myself in, the, in, the, uh, in my hotel room that has a non-functional AC because that's, that's welcome to SHOT Show. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in the later. Hopefully you're as excited about these lasers as I am. See ya.